this video is probably going to be a little bit all over the place. Um, good week, busy week, no video. <laughs> so we're going to try and just update a few things. I guess this will be a little bit more like maybe a vlog for the week. But we did get our trench dug, you can see, all the way out. We still don't have pipe in it, but yet again, we have more rain coming tomorrow, this week, it's gonna rain. So I think we've got most of the grading and trenching done. So we'll be able to see if we keep water from going in the greenhouse this week. We'll eventually have to dig deeper and get the pipes down in the, in the ground. So that's gonna mean going at least another four inches deeper everywhere. But for now, we're just going with a French trench, uh, not a French drain. All right, let's look at the greenhouse. We're gonna go look at the fan for inflating the film, but check it out. You can see if you look down the line, you come right here, come over here. You can see the depth that this is down into here to get back to those pipes. It's at least eight, 10 inches thick here. Same thing on the end walls, but let's go look at the fan. We looked on a lot of the greenhouse suppliers and to buy a fan blower kit, they were pretty expensive. 170, I think $174 was the most expensive I saw at one greenhouse supplier, down to about $129 for the blower and uh, some connectors. We just ended up going on Amazon and got this Dayton fan. So this is the bigger of the two squirrel cage fans that I saw in there. There was a smaller one. This one's running about 146 cubic feet per minute. That's how much air it'll move. And there was a slightly smaller one, but the price difference between them was, I don't know, less than $10. So this is one of those places where I tend to be bad. It's like, well, if I'm gonna spend a little bit more money, let's just go ahead and get a little bit more fan. Really didn't need to. So anyways, this is the fan. The way we put it in was just to install a two by six in between the post, cut a hole in here and screwed it in. Well, let's go look at the outside. So the way we resolve that we've got these two layers of plastic with that board that we put in there, as you can see here, we cut in a... I know the, the light is gonna be really low on this because it is past sunset, but I just wanted to capture what we're gonna do. So we're putting in the fan to inflate the film. And so what we've done is, as you can see, there's a two by six that we've already put on the other side of the inside film. So this is two layers. And this is a, uh, well, it's an outlet spacer for a, a box, a, a single gang electrical box. So that's what we're gonna use because this is almost exactly the size, the outlet of the fan. So we've undone the wiggle wire. I mean, one piece is still pretty much left in there. We're just undoing this one layer enough to do this. So we're gonna just barely, you know, we're gonna cut sort of an X in here, in this film, and then press this piece into knife out of the way. This way we'll get a good seal around the plastic, and we're just gonna screw this in, and then we'll trim up the pieces of plastic and attach the fan in the other way on the other side, and then pull this back, stretch back the wiggle wire into it. And uh, so that's how we're gonna do this in terms of getting air into the film on this side. One thing I want to tell you or show you and talk a little bit with the inflation of the poly film is that when we plugged it in, uh, we just let it run. It's hard to imagine that a fan that small with a greenhouse this big, that it would just keep blowing and blowing and blowing and that because of all the spring lock or the wiggle wire and the channels, it's an airtight seal between that, that fan basically and it just kept inflating and inflating and inflating. So these end walls got to be enormously wide. And at the other end, because as it kept expanding, the, this uh, film kept expanding, it was pulling on this channel lock so hard that it sheared about six screw heads all the way down there until it just popped the aluminum off. So two things that we did was uh, tape over the inlet on the fan, as you just saw, you can see, to reduce how much air it's pulling in. So the way we're gonna solve this is, one of the guys that's been commenting a lot on videos on this whole series, and seems to know more about this than anybody, 
uh, John Guest 45 you see in the comments. And to him, I say thank you because he has given us a lot of great advice. But his suggestion, let me back up. The way we're solving this right now a little bit, the pressure is that above the door up there, we're gonna eventually put in vent fans so that uh, with louvers on one end, fan on the other. So we're gonna cut a hole in there, frame that out and put a fan up. So I went ahead on the inside of the greenhouse on the other side and just cut a slit in the film so that as the air pushes around, it actually can come back into the greenhouse on the other side. We're gonna be placing an order though for what John Guest 45 suggested, which is a Dwyer uh, air pressure, uh, air sensor, pressure sensor switch, uh, electrical switch. So it's, um, as you can see in the picture, this is what it looks like, but you can be able to screw a quarter inch pipe into the back side of that switch and run it through that board and through the film on the inside in between these two layers. And because the polyfilm is effectively sealed all the way around, once you inflate this, if you turn the fan off, it stays inflated for a long time. You don't really need to run this fan 24 seven. So what that Dwyer pressure switch will do, when it gets to a certain pressure in the film, it'll shut off the fan. When the pressure eventually, you know, it loses pressure, gets below a certain point, it'll kick the fan back on and just reinflate it enough. What that's gonna do uh, is, in theory, is probably the fan will only run two hours instead of 24 seven. And I've seen people running, uh, that they just run these fans all the time, but you don't really need to if the film is sealed all the way around. So that'll be a, a real plus. So hopefully I'll order that, uh, it'll be in this week, get it installed, and you'll see it in the video next week. All right, in terms of data for the earth battery and how it's working, uh, a challenge is, is that we have got a number of inexpensive thermometers and things like that that we have been trying to use to record. So we've got this really just inexpensive, uh, Accurite humidity monitor and thermometer. Uh, and then we've got an anemometer that measures wind speed and also temperature. And between these things, we're just getting a lot of fluctuation. So I'm not really sure in terms of numbers what to tell people. But this is what I can say typically, is that during the day, the temperature gets into the greenhouse. We're able to maintain it roughly uh, right around between 95 and 100 degrees uh, pretty well, either with just opening the doors, fans, things like that. When the earth battery fans are running and they're taking that hot air and running it down into the earth battery system, and then we check the temperatures coming out of the, the returns into the greenhouse, the temperatures during the day are consistently coming out of the returns about 30 degrees cooler, uh, really pretty consistently. What we can also say is that at night, as the temperatures have been dropping, and we've been having temperatures getting down, actually got down into the 30s this week, 34, and had frost on the ground everywhere. The temperatures in the greenhouse stayed, didn't drop just barely below 60 degrees. So roughly, I think 55 was perhaps the lowest. That was the really, really cold night uh, when it was uh, almost 34 degrees outside with frost. And what it's been doing though, I can say, is that as the longer we run, the more days we run the earth battery system. So when we're taking that really hot air, putting it down into the ground, each night the temperature seems to, it seems to get a little bit or stay a little bit warmer in here at night every evening. So maybe by a degree or two, it's been climbing to where it's staying almost at 60 or just over 60 degrees in here. So the sense is, is that the earth battery system is working, that over time it's starting to build more and more heat. Things that we need to do to make this thing work more efficiently is that we do need to get thermostat, thermostatically controlled switches for these fans. So that ideally during the day when the temperature, let's say gets above 90, uh, or say 95, 
these fans would kick on and start pulling that hot air down, returning cooler air, and run all day as long as those temperatures are really, really hot. But as soon as the temperature drops below 90, that they would shut off until they hit a certain point, say, you know, 65 or 60 degrees, then they would kick back on and start pulling some of that warm air back so that we're not running them just 24 seven and losing, I think, some of the heat in that transition period, you know, in twilight hours right now, when it's in this transition, save that heat until it actually needs to come back on. So those are other things that we're gonna get this week, hopefully, is some thermostatically controlled switches for these fans so that they can set a, a temperature range for when they come on and when they go off. Okay, so I'm gonna edit in some video here that you can see with the anemometer that we got to check wind speed, is that tested the speed, air speed going into the fans just to get an idea of what's happening with the system. And you can see that the, the wind speed going in, at least as we've tested a couple of times, is ranging from about mid 16s to 18 miles an hour, the wind speed, just getting pulled into the fans up at the top of the ceiling, getting pulled down. And then at the return where they're coming out, the wind speed is averaging right around 12 miles an hour coming back out. So that gives you a sense of how much at least in terms of wind speed, there is a drop going across the system, which of course we would expect. What I don't know is what are we losing in terms of volume, cubic feet per minute? And maybe some of the folks, the science folks that are watching these videos that are a lot smarter uh, than I am, know a way to convert velocity somehow and everything that's going on with the system. And the fact that these are pulling about supposedly 483 cubic feet a minute of air going in and understand what that means in terms of what we're losing coming out of the system on the return. So one thing that I wanted to do just out of curiosity was to take a Y splitter and take both of the fans that we have and put them on one pipe as, as we did and run them through and see if there was really a noticeable difference coming out of the system on the other side. I can't say again, if there was a way to measure the volume of air, the cubic feet per minute coming out, that would probably be more helpful. But in terms of air speed coming out the other side, it really only meant a difference with two fans on one system of an increase of about one to two miles per hour of the air coming out. And it was hard to sense, perhaps there was more air volume coming out, I don't know. Again, this is a question I would propose to folks. I think the answer I already know is, is that it wouldn't make any sense to get two more of these fans than hook them up to the same system. I think that would just be a waste of money. It really seems that the difference was negligible uh, based on what we already have. Another aspect of the polyfilm inflation and insulation that we had asked about in the last video and got tons of great advice on, we just decided to go with this three inch dryer vent which we got 20 feet of this for $13 and cut it to length. And then it's just a matter of, you know, cutting a piece and then putting the, the pipe in there. And as you can see, these aren't even taped and they're just sitting there in place and they work perfectly as jumpers. I mean, they're not aesthetically the best thing and I might've done it a little bit differently putting them up. One thing when we put that pressure switch in uh, you know, I don't want to necessarily lose air pressure in some of these places. So what we'll probably do is just come back, take this and put some, some type of duct tape around here to try and close this off or even zip ties around to hold that a little bit tighter so that we're not losing air pressure out of those various jumpers in, uh, in other places. That's an update just uh, this week of the things that we were doing, have been doing. Again, nothing super exciting here, except we actually have some seedlings already starting to come up in a lot of the pots in various places. We got them all over. Uh, so, so that's exciting. Now, we have a greenhouse, which we just keep, every time I look out and see, we actually have a greenhouse on our farm. So that is it's just awesome. And it's so fun to come out here and to water plants and to see things starting to grow 
and think about all the potential that we have for this. Some things that we want to add is we don't have any lights. So those are gonna be really easy. We're just gonna add more two by fours across and set them, rest them just on top of those connectors and run them the length of the greenhouse down here. And then we'll be able to easily run and drop some LED lights in here so that when we come out at night, if, if we're doing some things or working out here, we can see and probably do some stuff with irrigation and working from the water over here. So anyways, we're gonna continue to just keep working and bringing, bringing you along with this, this greenhouse project. And then soon we're gonna start transitioning probably into some other things and other projects. But thanks again to everybody watching and following along with this series and for everybody who has offered comments and suggestions and advice, things really grateful. Uh, we have learned a lot. As I said, we are not experts. This is our first greenhouse that we've built and used. So it has really been wonderful to have all of the, just the comments, the people have taken time to write and leave and everybody's busy. So to, to do that has been a real help and a blessing to us. So, all right, well, that's it for this week. I hope everybody has a wonderful week ahead. Until the next video from here at St. Isidore's Farm, take care and God bless.